Hello and welcome back. Quick uh, announcement. Uh, oh, this would be the regular video. Something went wrong. None of the video captured, so I only have audio. This is going to be an audio-only episode apart from this intro. Um, got to the entire end. Uh, here's, here's me finding out that uh, the video didn't record. No, what? Uh, so, <laughs> I'll get it next time. I'll get it on the next chapter, guys. Uh, thanks for bearing with me, um, and uh, enjoy the reading. Hello, and welcome back. It has been far too long. That is on me. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, gang, we're finishing this book. In the new location, a little bit of set dressing, but uh, thank you guys so much for holding out. We are going to finish this book. I promise you that. We're going to do it. We're going to get back into it. But first, as always, a huge thank you to my patrons. You guys are amazing. There are so many of you. Those of you who may have been watching from the beginning of this uh, can remember how much and, and see how much we've grown in this time. Thank you. I owe you guys... I owe you guys so much, so thank you. Um, wow, I haven't done this in, in quite a while, so uh, links in the description, uh, backlog of videos. I will say, uh, I may have forgotten who has what accent, so if you're watching this in sequence, please know there's been a very long gap between chapter 30 and chapter 31. Quick, uh, quick insert here, guys, before we get started. Um, as I said with previous episodes leading up to this, but also just uh, uh, content warning for uh, these things. Uh, if you are sensitive to those, be aware of that. Take care of yourselves. Um, I want to keep you guys safe through this. But now, back to other Jake. So I think with that, and also... Um, my bookmarks, uh, Belligerently Bookish. Uh, check them out. They're awesome. So many great stuff, especially for you bookworms. Please uh, uh, send them some love. But I've got a drink. Got my book. So I think let's jump back in to The Legend of Luke by Brian Jakes, Chapter 31. Bullflay cracked his whip over the heads of the wretched rowers chained to the decks of the death pit. Backwater and ship oars, you little bunch of land spawn. Sit still there, not a word or a move, or I'll have the heart of your backs till your bones show through. Luke heard the anchor splash as he drew his oar on inboard. Placing a cheek flat on the oar shaft, he tried to look through the rowing port, but it was a very limited view. Shallow, clear water, a white sand beach, and just a glimpse of heavily wooded rocks. Norgold the otter, who had his head bent in similar fashion, murmured to Luke, I always hate making landfall. Makes me sick to my stomach thinking of green growing things, firm ground under me paws, and living free like I once was. The otter flinched nimbly as the lash descended across his back. Flea bit the rat stood wielding his own personal whip, sneering at the chained Norgal. Then don't think, oh scum, Master Bullfly told you not to move or speak. Now I'm telling you not to think, see? He turned as chains rattled nearby. Ranguvar was sitting up straight, her mad eyes boring into the rat. Try that on me, rat face. I'm thinking, I, thinking, I'd like to get just one paw round your louse-ridden throat. Go on, swing that lash. See if you can stop me thinking. Fleabit wilted under the black squirrel's gaze and fled the bottom deck, following Bullflay without a word. Vilu Daskar came out of his cabin, the silken scarf still bound around his neck, which was permanently marked from Luke's attack upon him. He cleared his throat painfully and beckoned the two ferrets, Akla and Ringpatch. They hurried to his side for orders. Break out the neck chains. We need water cask carriers and other food gatherers. Choose a party, but only from the top deck. Take enough crew with you so that you have two to one each slave. We'll lay over here for two nights for provisions. 
if any slave escapes, you will answer to me with your lives. Vilu stood waiting whilst two, st whilst two sea rats set up a chair and table on the stern deck. When a canopy had been rigged over the chair and food brought to the table, he sat down. Willag, Grig, Bullflay, bring the mouse Luke to me. Luke was freed from his oar shackles and fitted with a neck chain attached to paw manacles. Bullflay raised his whip. Up on deck, mouse! Move yourself! Luke smiled contemptuously at the slave master. Bring that whip down on me and I'll strangle you with it. Bullflay's paw faltered and he let the whip fall to his side. Sometimes he was not sure who he feared the most, the black squirrel or the warrior mouse. Luke strode past him, head held high, giving a broad wink to Doolim and Denno as he passed them on his way to the stairs. Vilu Daskar popped a wild grape into his mouth, chewing it slowly as he looked at Luke up and down. Willag, bring a chair for our guest. The warrior dismissed the offer with two words. I'll stand. Indicating the roast seabird, fruit, and wine, Vilu said, Suit yourself, Luke. Here you must be hungry. Have some food and drink. It's good. I'm only served the best. Though Luke's mouth was watering at the sight of the victuals on the table, he shook his head. I don't eat food from the table of a murderer. Vilu shrugged. Have it your own way. I brought you up here because I wanted to hear more about this treasure you have hidden. Tell me, where did you come by it? The reply Vilu received was flat and harsh. I've told you all, I'll take you to it. There's nothing more to say. Vilu's bone-handled scimitar was out, its tip under Luke's chin. There are many ways to die, quickly with a single stroke, or slowly, painfully, bit by bit. Now talk! Luke's chained paws rose, and he pushed the blade aside. If I die swift or slow, you will never find the hiding place. Remember, murderer, I'm the only beast alive who knows what it is. Kill me, or my friends and you will never possess a single piece of my tribe's treasure. Vilu stuck the blade point down into the deck timbers, and the scimitar stood quivering. He nodded and smiled. You are a strange and reckless creature, Luke, different from the rest. A brave beast like you would go far in my crew, maybe even standing at my side, second in command. Luke smiled back at him. Aye, Daska, then you could make me a real warrior. Teach me how to plunder defenceless ones, murder innocent creatures, and run away to hide aboard this red ship. You and your sea rogues would never stand to real warriors in combat. Cowards, assassins, and the scum of the oceans. That's all the captain of the Gorleach and his crew are. A burly weasel named Clubface was working nearby and heard Luke's words. Thinking to gain the admiration of Daskar, he drew his dagger and leapt upon the manacled slave, roaring, No beast talks to our captain like that and lives! I'll get ye! The weasel was big and strong, but he did not possess Luke's speed. The warrior mouse's paw chains wrapped him hard between his eyes, and Luke grabbed the paw holding the dagger, twisting it inward. Clubface felt himself tripped and fell backward. Luke slammed his weight down on top of the weasel, falling with him and driving the dagger deep into his attacker's heart. Like a flash, Luke was upright, the dripping blade in his paw facing the pirate's stoat. Daskar laughed aloud, thumping the tabletop with a scimitar handle, applauding. Neatly done, Luke. You are a real warrior. Come on now. You've got the dagger. Try and kill me. Sea rogues had come running to surround Luke. He relaxed and stood with the blade hanging loosely from one paw. Vilu Daskar stood and bowed slightly. Motioning his crew to stand off, he pointed the scimitar at Luke. My compliments. You are not only brave, but wise also. Luke nodded towards the vermin all around him. The numbers are a bit one-sided, Daskar. I'll slay you one day, but I pick the time and the place. 
Smiling and shaking his head, the pirate stoat replied, Well said. I like an enemy who uses his brains. Take him below and chain him back to the oars. Zip thunk! Before any beast could move, Luke had thrown the dagger, embedding it deep in the mast alongside Dasgar's head. Sometimes a knife can reach further than a sword. Remember that, stoat! Luke went down under the press of crew beasts. Vilu Daskar stood over him, shaking with rage. He raised the sword, holding it trembling over the fearless slave. Then, thinking better of his actions, he snarled. Get him below! Out of my sight! Sea rogues hoisted Luke upright and dragged him off, back to the death pit of the lower deck. Bullwag's flipper, damp and heavy, touched Berg's face, wakening him. The sea lion was back in the water. It was midnight of the second day since leaving the Twin Islands. The dolphins were gone. Berg, wake up, little friend. Give Bo a shake. Look yonder. Wood Island, the red ship. I don't know if that was the accent I used for Bullwag. Moonbeams danced on the phosphorescent sea. No more than an hour's sailing time away, the Gorleach could be seen, riding at anchor, close to the shore of the island, which looked for all the world like a chunk of forest sticking out of the main. Bo rubbed his eyes drowsily. I say, it does look jolly pretty in the moonlight. What? Bullwag drifted off from the raft. Aye, pretty dangerous too, mate. Well, shipmates, this is where we parts company. I wouldn't be much use if you on land or aboard a vessel, but I got you here. Verg waved the friendly giant. So you did, Bullwag, and I thanks to you for that. You've done more than enough for us. Good fortune to you and those bottle noses. Give him my thanks if you see him again. Bo added his farewells to those of his friend. Toodaloo and farewell, you old rascal. What? I'd watch out for sharks if I were you. Remember how they scoffed your old aunt? A bit careless, that. Keep your eyes peeled, sir. Oh, and give my regards to those bottlenose chaps. Not bad type, really, except for all this pesky spitting and squeaking. Goodbye now. Oh, sorry, there's a gnat flying around, if you can't tell. I'm at war with them. <clears throat> Bullwag sank beneath the surface and was gone. Now they were alone with only their wits to rely on. Lying flat on the raft, they paddled with their paws, discussing the situation whilst they were still out of earshot of the Gorleach. Well, Bo, we've got this far. What's the next move? Patently obvious, my dear fellow. Got to free our friends from Durant's Vile. What? Uh, <laughs> I know that, but we won't get very far jumping aboard the Gorleach and challenging our crew now, will we? Of course not. We need at least three of us to do that. We need a scheme, a plan, an idea, or a combination of all three. Come now, Berg, get the old mousy thinking cap on. I'm more a leader than a planner, don't you know? As they drew closer to the monstrous red ship, Verg waded up carefully, an idea forming in his head. Bo, see those rope canvas fenders hanging over the sides to protect the girl each from rocks? Indeed I do. Whacking great things they are, too. Some of them bigger than our little raft. Why do you ask? Because, I've been thinking, we could be offended too. The deuce you say? <laughs> what what will that do, pray? Well, I notice the stern fenders are hanging a bit low. Suppose we was to cut lo one loose and let it float off. Then we ties our, our own up in its place and we hides there. Suddenly, Bo was thinking along the same lines as Verg. Rather <laughs> spiff and wheeze, what? From there, we could contact the slave chaps at night when no beasts about. Aye, and get word to him when we're here. See if we can pinch a few weapons to help Luke and the others. By the left, I'm glad I thought of that little plan. Don't slack, Verg. Paddle harder, please. <laughs> it's one thing straining my brain to think of these plans, but it's a bit much to expect me to do all the paddling, old chap. Oh, but in up, Bo. You make more noise than a squeaking bottle nose. I beg your pardon, sir. Confounded nerve of the mouse. What? Stop nattering and keep paddling. Pish tosh, I could say the same for you, whisker face. No, you couldn't, floppy lugs. Yes, I could, bottle nose. Bottle nose yourself, gabby guts. Glaring at one another and arguing heatedly, they ran smack into the Gorleach's stern. Thud. High up into the near the after deck, a window swung open. Poking his head out, a sea rat, blinking from the cabin lanterns, called, Ahoy! Who's out there? Come on, show yourself. 
The two friends grasped the bottom of the fender, pulling the raft close beneath the stern. Huddled together, they held their breath, listening as some beast joined the sea raft. Hey, hey, what's going on here, mate? I thought I heard a noise out here. Sounded like two beasts arguing, then some had struck the ship. A third voice joined the conversation angrily. Something will strike you if you don't shut that window. Can't a beast get a bit of rest without being blown about the bunk by drafts from the seas at night? The window slammed amid sounds of muffled arguments. Both friends gave a quiet sigh of relief. Berg whispered, Better wait until later when they're asleep. Then we'll see what can be done. What's the funny face for, Bo? Uh, funny face? Nothing, old lad. <laughs> I'm blinking well famished. What? You mean all the vittles are gone? Exactly. And the water, too. We'll starve to death. Don't tell rubbish. You could live off in your fat for ages. <laughs> Go. Ah. Don't make so much noise. What are you up to now, Bo? Yeah. This bally bladder whack tastes awfully foul. I ain't surprised, matey. But even the sharks turn their nose at that stuff. Bo, where are you going? Come back! But Bo was shimmying up the stern galley with the alacrity that only a hungry hare could muster. Hold me a tick, old thing. Hold the fort till I get back. A moment later, the gluttonous creature had vanished into the darkness. Verg perched on the raft, nibbling anxiously at his paw, wondering where his friend had gone to. A ferret and a sea rat were working in the galley. The ferret laid out loaves of hot bread to cool at the open serving hatch, whilst the rat was occupied chopping up fruit, which he mixed in a bowl with honey. Good fresh fruit they got from the island today, Cully. Cotton doesn't go much for it, but it'll look nice on his table for breakfast. Sampling a slice of apple, the ferret licked honey from his paws and winked at the rat. We'll have it for lunch after we clears the captain's table. Wig wiping his paws on a rag, the rat took down a dead pigeon from a hook. Lend a pull to pluck this, will you, mate? They both bent to the task until the bird was plucked. Shuffling to the cupboard for a roasting spit, the rat stopped, looking at the empty space on the table just inside the window ledge and turned angrily on his mate. Think you're funny, don't you? Come on, put it back. Put what back? What's up, matey? Ha, don't you matey me, you fat robber. Where's me fruit salad got to? Now give it back here. I never touched no fruit salad. Hoy, where's me bed gone? It was laid out here to cool a minute ago. Listen, snob chops, never mind your bread as an excuse. I saw you pinching slices of apple out of that fruit salad. I'll chop your thieving paws off with me cleaver. Oh, thief, is it? Well, you can explain to the crew where the bread's gone when there's none for breakfast. So there, don't you scouse, don't you accuse me of stealing your lousy bread. Take that! Swinging the dead pigeon, the rat caught the ferret a smack. Oof, that was a foul blow. Here, you have some of this. The ferret dealt the rat a stinging blow to his ear with a wooden rolling pin. They fell to fighting in earnest. Bo watched from his hiding place on the deck, munching on the hot loaf. The sound of approaching paws caused him to slide into the shadows of the galley bulkhead. As he did, a loaf of bread fell to the deck. Fleabit stopped in passing, noticed the loaf, and grabbed it. Gnawing away happily, he went to see what all the noise was about in the galley. Poking his head around the door, he said, Nice bread this, mate. Hope you got plenty more for breakfast tomorrow. Looks good. I likes good bread, I does. Instantly, he was dragged into the galley and set upon by the two cooks, who bounded him mercilessly. So you're the one, you scringing little thief. Oh, that's murder. They're killing me. The ferret swung his rolling pin with relish. Kill you, dirty gum swiper. I'll murder you. Take that. Brandishing a copper ladle, the rat leaped on the hapless flea bit, pounding him severely. Aye, and after he's killed and murdered you, I'm going to slay you, you filthy vittle plunderer. A sound overhead caused Verg to look up. Bo's muted whisper came out of the darkness. Stand by the raft there. Here, catch these. Two long hot loaves dropped down on Verg. Then Bo was alongside him, placing a bowl between them both. Nothing like a fresh fruit salad and honey to keep a chap's chin up. What? Don't hog all the bread. There's a good chap. Uh, chuck a loaf over here. I found a flask and filled it with the water cask. Better than nothing, I suppose. What, what? Verg was glad of the food, though he lectured Bo severely. Your stomach could have got us both caught and killed. That was a foolish risk you took. Bo, don't ever do it again. 
The garrulous hair twiddled both his ears carelessly. Phil de dee, mousy mate. What do you expect a bot to do, sit here and jolly well starve? Fat chance. Verg could not help smiling at the devil may care bow. Oh, all right. But be careful. Great seasons. Look at the size of these loaves. There's enough here to feed most of the crew. Did you have to take so much bread? Bo tore off a chunk and dipped it in the honey. Waste not? What not, old bean? Bet Luke and company will be glad of fresh bread. Don't imagine they get it too often. What, what? When we've had a nap, we'll go and seek them out. It was still some hours to dawn. Luke sat shackled to his bench, head bent as he slumbered over his oar. Bullflay lay snoring on his makeshift bed. All was quiet amid the smoldering lanterns of the lower deck, save for the odd whimper of some wretched oar slave, dreaming of home and happier times. Rangivar was dozing, too. She flicked at something tickling her ear. It was a dried stem of bladder rack. It tickled again, and this time she caught it with her paw, opening eyes as some beast whispered, What a little thing! You don't happen to have a chap down there named Luke, do you? A warrior type like yourself? Rangiver immediately became alert. She looked to the oar port and saw a bewhiskered hare smiling at her, holding a paw to his lips as a caution to silence. Rangiver nodded, pointing across to Luke. She murmured quietly, Over there, the first oar port on the other side. Who are you? Formal instructions later, friend. Here, chew on this. Completely mystified but grateful, Rangivar accepted the big chunk of fresh bread packed with fruit salad. Don't eat so fast, ma'am. Twenty chews to each mouthful. Now, bye-bye. With a wave, the hare vanished. Rangivar shook Luke awake by wagging the end of his oar. Shh, you've got a visitor, Luke. Look to your oar port. Bo peeped in at Luke, his face a mask of mock accusation. Why aren't you dead, sir? Luke shook his head in disbelief. Why aren't you? Far too hungry to let things like die and interfere with my plans, old fella. Verg's alive too, you know. Listen, I can't stop to chat. Here's some food. Share it about. Be back tomorrow night. Keep your chin up. I'll see what I can do about bringing something to deal with those chains. Meanwhile, sit tight and uh, smile. The rescue party's arrived at last. What? When Bo was gone, Luke and Rangiver took the hare's advice. They sat tight and smiled, sleep forgotten, now that the first bright rays of hope had started to glimmer. And that is where we will end this episode. Next week, we'll be back with Chapter 32. I do hope you join me. If you're just now uh, coming into this series, I've done the entire book up to this point. We've only got um, maybe 10 chapters left. So, if you want to go back and read them, listen to them, you wouldn't read a video. <laughs> but either way, whatever you'd like to do, the videos are there. Uh, I have other content on my channel if you want to see some of the other stuff. I've got my link tree in my bio if you want to support and join my amazing patrons. Again, thank you guys. If you'd like to do that, there's a li uh, various links to support uh, in the description as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time. I hope you have a good week. Stay safe. Bye.